this control theory uh, comes in uh, in, in, in a more, more, far more complex setting. Hmm? So, we, uh, we had uh, uh, the uh, recall fractional mechanics. Uh, mechanics, um, calculus of variations. And then um, we will take a big step once we put the structure in place, sort of um, go and do what I did uh, uh, yesterday and uh, slightly generalize it and then we will take a big step and do it for, for example, Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, why jump from classical mechanics to Navier-Stokes? Uh, in fact, that question was raised to me in the late 80s when I started, you know, um, beginning to, to, and also early 90s when I began writing papers on control theory for Navier-Stokes. He said, well, there's a lot of equations simpler than that. Why don't you work on that? But that's, I sort of ignored them. And uh, sometimes that works. Because if the criticism is uh, um, not valid, you ignore and move on. So, um, so the calculus of variations, um, in the simpler setting, you don't have constraints. Uh, the constraints bring very interesting uh, new attributes such as variational inequalities and the contact problems and so forth, whether you study it in free boundary problems, Stefan problem, or in finance, uh, they all come from the classical mechanics. Uh, simple classical mechanics problems. Uh, so, so, we go back to that uh, classical mechanics problem I wrote down, which is uh, you have a Lagrangian, uh, T, Y and Y dot, uh, DT, and I want to take it to minimum. Uh, so, I give an elaborate uh, uh, comment uh, on when you switch from infimum to minimum, you know, that's this tonally young and uh, the, the whole story. Uh, young measure itself uh, by, uh, you know, is, is in nonlinear elasticity, it um, creates very interesting um, uh, uh, problems. Um, so, we said that the Euler-Lagrange equation, right? And I ask, uh, you should know this by heart now, what is it? without looking at your notes, d by? Y by dot. Y, y dot. Y, very good. D by dt, do L by dot. Okay, so if you can recall this by heart, you are in very good shape with respect to many branches of science. <laughs> so, uh, so you have that. And then we went and uh, um, said, um, so, we wanted to define uh, this one, a momenta. Uh, so, uh, that is dl by dy dot. Uh, why did, why call that one, why even worry about that variable? Where did this come from? So, it is sort of things appear to work well. Why did it, uh, uh, why we all of a sudden brought our attention to uh, theta? It's because uh, it goes back to classical mechanics. Classical mechanics in the in the Lagrangian formulation in the Newtonian, you know, the, for a long time until Einstein came along and showed that the space time is curved and uh, and it sort of uh, put the real picture of space time. Before that, it was you know there is a classical mechanics either Newton's law type viewpoint, um, force is equal to mass times acceleration, or there was another viewpoint. Uh, the other viewpoint is that. Uh, uh, the motion is actually characterized by minimizing some cost functional. It's called the action. So this is the action. And a uh, uh, lot of people think the ideas in e economic theories um, of minimizing something, it's um, uh, independent of uh, classical mechanics. Then you should go and read the uh, book uh, by uh, Paul Samuelson. Uh, he was a Nobel Prize winning economist. He was essentially like the big mentor for all the other Nobel laureates like Blacks and Souls and all these uh, things. So, if you read his economic theory in uh, the first book he wrote, it's very much influenced by ideas from mechanics and thermodynamics and things like that. So, he, he was an engineer 
and he moved to economics and brought those ideas into <laughs> economics and set uh, that subject uh, going. Anyway, so, uh, so you write the action as uh, I, I will write it this way, y and y dot <coughs> as um, what is the kinetic energy you, of a particle? Half m is kinetic. Half m and what is the v? It is y dot uh, squared. And then you write the potential energy as uh, uh, of, um, let's say, gy for gravitational, you just write y. So we call this one uh, the Lagrangian, the difference between kinetic energy and the potential energy. So what is uh, dl by uh, dy dot is equal to m of y dot. And so that is equal to momentum, right? So since um, uh, in, in, in classical mechanics, uh, this quantity played a, that the role of the momenta, then uh, the attention was given to uh, that. And uh, anyway, so we write it this way, then immediately the Euler-Lagrange equation became uh, d theta by dt, d theta by dt, is, so this is theta now, is equal to dl by dl by dy. So when you see of a complex partial differential equation calculation uh, in control theory and when you see the adjoint equation, it is that equation is what you are looking at uh, in a, with some additional terms in it may be a PDE and so forth. Anyway, so then you define the Hamiltonian So the Hamiltonian, I was looking for my wristwatch, uh, is, uh, is, is defined as H of um, the T explicit dependence in T I will ignore, okay. Uh, it is defined as the state variable, so that's your velocity. Your, uh, this uh, new variable you ca call the momenta, be, be inspired by this special example of the Lagrangian, which is uh, the, uh, that arises in classical mechanics. So you define this as the theta dot y dot. Uh, minus L of y and y dot. Actually, uh, the moment we go to control formulation, this even becomes much more transparent what uh, we uh, are doing. So, now what happens to, uh, so notice that immediately dy by dt is obtained by the right hand side in order to get to this one, I differentiate the right hand side with respect to theta, right? It kills this term, it gives you y dot, and therefore this must be equal to dh by d theta. Likewise, that box has another part, d theta by dt is equal to what? d theta by dt is equal to dl by dy. Uh, so, to get to dl by dy, you know, this is 0, it is minus dl by, right, and uh, um, h and l are negatively related, and therefore this is equal to minus dh by dy. So, this is, agree? Everybody agree? Now, so, uh, so that much is, um, and then I said, um, uh, so that is uh, Hamilton, there are two, three Hamiltons, so, but we just say one Hamilton. So then we say that, um, we, uh, Jacobi asked a question that if you, um, so if your trajectories are like that, uh, never mind the target constraints and in constraints and those uh, bring in additional difficulties, boundary condition for the Hamilton-Jacobi equation and so forth. There are plenty of open problems there. Jacobi asked, uh, Suppose you start with, uh, this is your time, this is your height. So suppose you start with the uh, initial data t at a time tau. And uh, so let's say this is a spot in, 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 in Trivendra. And your goal is to go from here to maybe sometime uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, Coimbatore or maybe Bangalore. And you want to minimize this one. So, so uh, Jacobi asked, uh, suppose you minimize this with respect to all y dot, 
So you essentially thinking about why dot is equal to some control u is even better to us uh, put uh, that way. Um, in the classical mechanics book, uh, they don't put this y dot. They just uh, uh, substitute the extremals here and put that as the value function. But it's even better simply think of it as some kind of control and uh, u. So the Jacobi's question is, if you define s of um, uh, initial, initial time is t, t and x, why? Because if you take the course functional, take the course functional, start the trajectory at time t at the location little x. And uh, uh, depending on the control, this uh, will be have some value, but you minimize over all possible controls. Each control will give a different trajectory. So, so then all the dependence on this is wiped out. Only thing this will be dependent on will be on the initial data and time, right? So this is called the, uh, um, I think it's called classical, uh, what is it called in classical mechanics? It's probably still action, classical action, action functional or something like that. No, this is action functional. Uh, let's call it value function because I forgot. Maybe call action functional or something like that. It's also the same uh, utility function in economic theory in many of these. So if you want to understand many of these uh, economic theories, is, is essentially minimizing over all possible control. So Jacobi was uh, asked the question that uh, how does this uh, value function uh, change as you change the initial time and initial position? And it turns out that this derivation I will show you hopefully today. Uh, it, uh, it satisfies the equation, this plus h s, and then in place of theta, you have the first spatial derivative <coughs> of the value function. You get this equation. It turns out that if uh, this has a stochastic term, you will get a, some higher uh, second uh, derivative. If you have a jump noise, you have an integral term. But uh, this uh, classical mechanics uh, picture is still true. So now we go and uh, 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 so the see what uh, Pondriagan uh, and his students uh, um, uh, did. So, so as I pointed out that in the action functional, in its simplest case, you can actually put y dot is equal to u, right? But the controls are not usually like that. They usually, they are governed by um, ordinary differential equation, perhaps. And um, so, in general, more, more generally, so y dot is no longer equal to u and, so I'm going to give a more general picture, but I just remembered that I want to give you uh, one more, some more insight. What is H? What's Hamiltonian in this classical mechanics example? It's a function of uh, y and theta, right? So what is that? So that is equal to, can you compute and see? So it is theta dot y dot minus, uh, you can write down Tell me what is uh, squared minus v, okay? So think about it and tell me what is going to be h in the classical mechanics setting. Okay, so let's go back to uh, this problem. So, um, yeah, I, I let you, um, we, will see, we, I, we will see that one more time, but uh, for the moment I just leave it like that for you to think about. So more generally, this is Pontryagin picture and students. The students were also very, very famous mathematicians, geometers, but is, um, so is Pontryagin and students. So they said, okay, in general, we want to look at uh, dy by dt is equal to some function f of y and u. But I want to take, let's take a special case. 
even beyond that so that you understand the picture better. The understanding is better. So we will uh, take it as let's say shy of uh, y plus u. So it is like uh, you have a differential equation and then you apply control theory, right? There are other operators come in when you actually go and uh, put uh, the real control problem, but the uh, picture can be understood here. And uh, subject to, we would like to take maybe go from A to B. If I write here, everybody can read. Uh, L of um, T, Y, and Y dot, I want to put U, control, DT. But uh, we will also again take special case to b bring out the picture better. So we will write A and B, some theta of Y plus half U squared. U squared DT. So I take the course functional as a special form and I am interested in minimizing this. It's still not that specialized actually, it is a formidable problem. So the Lagrangian is taken as purely a function of y plus half u squared. So that there is a, uh, there's an, uh, a cost involved in, in the state, uh, you know, whatever you want to ask uh, regarding the state. And also there is a work you do when you apply control, you know, if you want to go from this place to another town, um, it's not... Uh, you can't uh, pick a trajectory with uh, infinite amount of fuel. You should, the, the fuel uh, total energy should be also bounded. And that also should be minimized. And that's why this is the that. So before I erase anything, I told you the classical mechanics picture, we, we, let's not divorce from click, uh, classical mechanics picture. So, uh, so let's see, we go, so we want to see what is the counterpart of um, the Hamiltonian. And what is the counterpart of the Hamilton equations? And what is the counterpart uh, of the Hamilton Jacobi equation? Right? And uh, to facilitate this, uh, we had introduced another Hamiltonian called the pseudo Hamiltonian. And no constraints here, in the, in the sense that you can take values in uh, anywhere in R. Uh, constraints only make, uh, bring in more disciplines like. Uh, um, uh, non-smooth analysis, and we do that, uh, you know, people in the, in the field. Okay, so if you can help me, we want to first, uh, so I want to design a Hamiltonian that looks very much like this one, but I want to call that a pseudo-Hamiltonian. This is, uh, this uh, language is probably, it goes back to L.C. Young. Uh, L.C. Young has a famous book in Calculus of variations, unreadable because it's very vague, but it has very brilliant ideas. So, uh, pseudo Hamiltonian. Because once we understand this one, then you go and uh, replace dot products by Hilbert space products, and uh, that uh, equation by the PD, any PDE you heard in this lecture series. Uh, then you get the corresponding problem, control problem in, uh, 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 in, in that situation. So it's called pseudo Hamiltonian. Let's call that one H, H of uh, twiggle T y theta and U, the control U. It, this is already in there in the classical mechanics, but they were not very careful in classical, um, uh, traditional books in classical mechanics. Yes, you will see. So, the pseudo Hamiltonian I want to design as, uh, you know, this adjoint variable I came up with, right? But um, instead of y dot, y dot is a um, scary thing. When you go and differentiate with respect to y, if you are um, starting off and not uh, nailed down, hammered down by your professor that you ignore y dot, you will be confused by this, uh, how to take differentiation. So it's much more easy maybe. Um, to use this formula, right? Because that's the momenta, the right-hand side of the momenta. 
So remember the way I define the Hamiltonian, which now I am going to call pseudo Hamiltonian because I am going to have control, is that I took the momentum momenta variable multiplied by y dot. Instead of y dot, this y dot may be some, I use the entire right hand side of y dot. So what is that? Psi y plus u, let's use that special form. So it is psi of y plus u. And then minus, I have the Lagrangian, right? That's whatever you write actually. Uh, so what did you write? You wanted to uh, write it in a special form. You will find that in the calculation we don't need the special form, but let's write it this way. Because there are a lot of uh, relationships I can very easily show. So, so I write, I have momenta times the right hand side of the, uh, your differential equation minus the Lagrangian. So the Lagrangian is theta of y plus half control squared. There's no, uh, we can make it vector if you like, but leave it as a scalar. Okay, so you remember, you'll remember this one, so I can get rid of this. Right? Can I erase that? Everybody agree? Okay, so the Pontryagin principle can be now stated. It stated uh, in uh, what I am writing down is, is what is called easy Pontryagin maximum principle because it doesn't involve any constraint. Hard Pontryagin maximum uh, principle involves constraint and that involves uh, to prove that uh, uh, probably the most uh, um, 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 advanced uh, results to date is Faterini and myself used uh, Eccelin variational principle to prove for a large class of semilinear equation with constraints. But you don't need uh, that to talk about here. So um, the uh, Pontryagin maximum principle is stated this way. This is what, uh, so Pontryagin maximum principle again skips the existence of optimal control theory because that's I told you that's young measures and tonally business. We skip that. We are in the Euler Lagrange level which was rewritten there. So Pontryagin maximum principle says, very similar to this, this statement and that statement. So, and, uh, so we, Pontryagin maximum principle says that the dy by dt is equal to the pseudo Hamiltonian because I want to leave that control in there. So pseudo Hamiltonian, what is the notation? Let's suppress the t because it's a nuisance. Uh, so y theta u d by what? d by d, d, uh, d theta. Agreed? So that's the, that looks like this equation. Everybody agree? So first equation, you know, the state variable is obtained by differentiating the Hamiltonian with uh, respect to theta. Why don't we check that that is in fact true? What will happen if you differentiate uh, the pseudo Hamiltonian with respect to theta? You get psi y plus u. So you agree with that. So you get psi y plus u. Uh, so that's the statement one in Pontryagin maximum principle. Statement two is that d theta by dt is equal to minus dh triggered by dy, because isn't that the second equation? So let's write that equation. So if I differentiate it, so I have a minus here. And uh, allow me to uh, help me differentiate y. Uh, h with respect to y. So it is psi dash y. So that's where we had to be careful if it's a vector case or operator case. So it is psi dash y. If it is actually a matrix, it will be a star, a star or operator star acting on theta. Agreed? This is the, the derivative. And I will show you, uh, you can easily write it as a vector product 
differentiate, ghetto differentiate, you can get this one. Um, or you can write down the Fisher de derivative. So in a scalar case, I don't have that, that star. In the vector case, I need to write. So if I differentiate with respect to theta, I get that. Uh, uh, with respect to y, I get that. This, is that the only term? Theta minus theta dash y. So we de uh, derived what is called the adjoint equation used in meteorology, oceanography, control theory in PDEs, ODEs in one step. So that is shy dash y theta minus theta dash. Okay, let's be, before running further, let's say where did these terms come from? Where did this term come from? It comes from the differential equation. So it is nothing but the linearization sometimes it is called. It's the first derivative of this nonlinearity applied to this uh, adjoint variable theta. And where did this term come from? Hmm? From the cos functional. Where did the cos functional? Cos functional I erased it. <laughs> right? So that was t dt dl by the, the dl by dy. Remember, it's like this term. Hmm? Dl by because uh, the cos functional was theta y plus half u squared. Okay, so then that means that uh, essentially this part, if you look at that part of the adjoint equation, uh, you can actually write down for any ODEs, PDEs, anything, because that simply comes from the original dynamical system. And also in the Pontryagin maximum principle, the first equation, the first Hamilton equation is, uh, it, it gives you the original equation. The second equation is the, uh, in the first derivative of the nonlinearity. So it's also come from here, but uh, I, I need to put a star here because in the operator case, matrix case, uh, so that's why it's called the adjoint equation because it's a minus, so it's going to run back backwards. Usually when you have an initial data here, and uh, this will have a final data, depending on the problem you have, uh, it is uh, zero. Which case the adjoint variable goes to zero? Calculus of variations question. How many of you studied calculus of variations? Variation, how many study variational calculus? The same thing. <laughs> I don't know because I studied variational calculus in Sri Lanka and then studied calculus of variations. Um, so under what condition the uh, n condition, what can you say about the uh, free n condition and fixed n condition? Do you remember? If it's ending on a curve, the best problem to remember is what's called the Zemelos problem, uh, right? That's called the transversality condition. So in, in the most general case, uh, if uh, you want this trajectory to go inside the set, then what you will get is uh, this should be belong to the normal cone of the set, uh, Clark normal cone of the set and so forth. So you can generalize like this. But let's leave it here with the understanding that the original first equation of the Pontryagin maximum principle is nothing but the state equation, right? That's the equation I wrote down and erased. Second equation is also obtained from the state equation uh, with the first derivative. And it's, it has a forcing term, which is the pressure derivative or the first derivative of the cos function. Pontryagin maximum principle has one more statement. So the third statement is I'm going to get rid of this and we'll come back to the Hamilton Jacobi uh, later. So the third statement is that depending on the sign you uh, but the Pontryagin maximum principle, so the third statement is that pseudo Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian achieves uh, a maximum at you start the optimal control at time t. Remember the Hamiltonian is def uh, defined for every time, in fact in the more Rigorous setting is uh, almost uh, everywhere kind of statement. So the third statement says that if you if you pick the optimal control, if you pick the optimal control, leaving the other guys at the optimal value, it's so a sort of a puzzling statement. Uh, if you read a um, control theory book, uh, Bryson and Ho, for example, for classical.
who consider the best uh, control theory book, Applied Optimal Control. But this is the way it's also proved in the more uh, uh, advanced setting. The statement is uh, written like that. I ignore the time again. The optimal control, optimal corresponding adjoint, and the optimal uh, optimal state, optimal adjoint, optimal control is equal to actually maximum over over. In this case, I am taking control as uh, you know at a, every time. So uh, no constraint. So I'm going to vary the control at time t over the entire real line uh, of uh, edge of again y star, theta star, and u. Um, that's what you need to first register. Students look at it and say, well, we have a y star here and y star here. The u star uh, depends on y star and, you know. Uh, but this is how it is uh, the statement we prove. Okay, so once you have that. So, so it turns out that once you take a look at the right-hand side, once you prove, once you find the best u, I will, when I do the example, you will see, you will re-express u in terms of these two variables, right? Because you are, fi you are finding the best u, and therefore we call this uh, quantity, so this is all uh, pseudo-Hamiltonian, this new quantity, only a function of y star and c theta star, so the, we call this one true Hamiltonian. I need to calculate the true Hamiltonian explicitly and show it to you. So that's the third statement. Third statement in the case when u is allowed to vary all over r can be stated as what? What did you study in calculus when you, when this has to, how do you find the maximum? Just derivative, right? Um, if you don't have differentiability, then it's a different story. Then you just leave it uh, on, uh, go to set valued. Uh, so this actually implies you can find u star by, find u star by d h twiggle over d u is equal to 0. So you can actually differentiate with respect in the simplest case so that we see where the things are. So let's differentiate it. Um, so be, uh, the, why I am doing that? Because I want to find uh, the optimal control explicitly. So what is the optimal control? What is the Hamilton pseudo? Um, Pseudo Hamiltonian, it looks like this, right? So, what is dh twiggle by du? So, I want to set that to 0. You agree? So, what is equal to that? Is equal to theta dot u. So, I am differentiating with respect to theta. You know, this is at a given time point. So, don't be puzzled by the fact that these things are functions of time. So, this is equal to the first term will give you just theta, and the second term will give you u. And that is 0, and therefore the optimal control, this is the optimal control, is equal to the adjoint variable. Okay? So, the, so I write a very, uh, came up with a very easy uh, uh, thing to complete. So, the third statement give me that the optimal control here, u star, in fact, indeed equal to theta. Right, because I'm going to write it so that you'll see how uh, how do you calculate this u star, or how do you, so so now you uh, um, uh, come to the level where we can even talk about the numerical method of what the what is different from what is called the direct CFD, where you just simulate the original problem versus in the control problem. So let's uh, get rid of this. Uh, if you want, uh, do you want me to? Can I erase the middle one, right? So that it's, you know, it's out of your um, attention span. So get rid of that. So you have this equation, dy by dt. So these are all optimal. So if you want, you can go and put the star here. All of them are optimal. 
How do you calculate this one? I give you a third equation. How do you calculate? This is a differential equation, right? So I have um, initial data is uh, starting at x. How do you solve this problem and get a u star? Let's say you have somebody who can uh, program the ODE, right, differential equation for you. So you put an initial data, right, and you want to solve this problem. I, you can even have some function. This is how this function is given to you. Maybe it could be half y squared or something. Can you solve this problem, the first one alone? What is missing? Let's say this was just sine of y. So what is missing? What is missing in the first equation? Forget this second day, that looks scary. Look at the first equation, right? If I say you had to solve this equation and I even make it easier, this is equal to y star. <laughs> so very easy, easy. Can you solve this equation? I can make it further easy, even make it zero. Can you solve this equation? What is missing? Louder. U star. Is U star is known? No, you don't. Forget the, all these L2 spaces, function spaces, we, we don't need all that. <laughs> First, I understand the logic, right? So, you don't know U star. This is what you are trying to find. You don't know U star. So, let's see, let's see, forget the stars, because this is an optimality system, so it's everything is star. Let me transport here. So this problem is ut is equal to theta t because we proved it, right, by that. So let's iterate. Say I started off as a computational scientist uh, early 80s, but I haven't done anything. So the, my, the current computational scientist will get angry if I claim. <laughs> but uh, let's <laughs> take a, uh, so what do they do? They iterate, right? So the initial data is given to you. So, y0 is equal to some little x. So, you, let's say you have an initial guess on y uh, un. You don't know what it is, but you put an initial guess. And uh, I initial yn, and uh, so if I give you an initial guess, assume that u is just constant, to, uh, you need to just put, uh, uh, keep the accelerator pressed constant from, to go from here to Bangalore. So, so uh, if that is u is a constant, yeah, you get yn, but that's not the optimal one. Then we go to the next equation. Ah, you notice that theta is in fact equal to u, right? So that gives you, so now you say that, okay, but you found yn, you put it here, and that will get, allow you to uh, compute theta n plus 1, right? Agree? What is theta n plus 1? That is the new guess for the control. Right? What is the problem here? Is it okay? It's fine. So now, uh, what you do, you uh, bring this, uh, whatever you computed here, and uh, put it on the right hand side, and you solve it. Uh, the difficulty is that, let's say you start with an initial guess, then you need to calculate yn, and when you go here, this term and that term depend on the entire yn. Right, yn in the entire interval, t. And therefore, uh, in order to solve this differential equation, which runs backward in time, you should have stored, because you go from here to Bangalore, you, so you had an initial guess, but you, your computer uh, sort of co computed the hypothetical scenario, but it should have then stored this yn in the entire interval so that we can even talk about solving this one in the, back, the backward direction. So a typical adjoint, the first challenge, they do other sophisticated things. The first challenge is how to solve this, uh, well, yeah. No, because the iteration is not in the time iteration. It's with respect to uh, uh, updating the control. So I start with an initial guess. If you want, you can put it n minus 1. That's OK. Start, so so you, you put some constant in time, that gives, that, uh, then you solve this ODE. Now you come to this ODE, you can to solve backward in time, 
uh, you need the y because this y is appearing here. So you solve it and that gives you theta, but you remember that theta is equal to u, right? So hopefully as n goes to infinity, you get the situation where all this is gone, it is coupled like. So it is, it is coupled like that, you can inherently couple. The forward equation depends on u, backward equation depends on y, but the u depends on theta. In the more complex situation, there are operators coming, but this is the, uh, the, the fundamental uh, numerical challenge. So it's not the adjoint, it's not um, some, uh, what's called the straightforward CFT. Okay, so that is where that point. Having said that, let's go and calculate the true Hamiltonian because I spoke about pseudo Hamiltonian versus true Hamiltonian. And uh, so what is true Hamiltonian? I said if you maximize this and then you will find that u will be a function of these two guys and you substitute back for u, you get only a function of that. That looks like, but when you do it in an example, you will understand that. So let's, um, here, it turns out that u on is only a function of theta, so we will substitute here. So what will you get? So theta is equal to u, u is the optimal control, you substitute here, so it is psi y, theta times y, uh, psi of y, plus how much? Theta squared, right, minus theta of y, and then minus half theta squared. And therefore, this is equal to theta times uh, psi y, plus, uh, what is that? Theta squared by 2. Plus half, half theta squared minus theta of y. So you can see this statement is correct. It's only function of, right? So you call this one true Hamiltonian, y and theta, true. So here's a little exercise. Compute, uh, show that uh, d, uh, dy by dt is equal to dh by the true Hamiltonian h by d theta and uh, d theta by dt is equal to minus dh by dy. But I also made another, so, um, uh, so explicitly we know how to um, um, sort of deal with the Pontryagin maximum principle, all three statements uh, in, in, in this example. I also spoke about the Hamilton-Jacobi equation that uh, I will derive now, uh, but let's first uh, write it down. Um, so in the Hamilton-Jacobi equation, so the, from this example is almost um, conceptually is not a big jump to go what's called this easy Pontryagin maximum principle to go from this problem to a situation where you have a partial differential equation here because all the dot products had to be replaced by inner products and uh, the say, statement follows. Um, if it is a uh, more constrained uh, Pontryagin maximum principle then uh, you know finite and infinite dimension has difficulties uh, you know different type of difficulties so more arsenal comes. Okay so the Hamilton Jacobi equation with the reservation that I may mess up one of the signs, I said that it is equal to d s by d tau plus the true Hamiltonian, true, uh, and it is v, sorry, not v, uh, s ds by dx, where this is where you, uh, you know, wherever you have, um, um, you have, um, Theta, you want to put uh, um, um, uh, first derivative. So what is the Hamilton-Jacobi equation? Uh, so it is d s by d tau, and the true Hamiltonian looks like this, right? So, so plus, you may end up in the minus in my formulation when I derive, but instead of theta, I put the first derivative of the action functional. So it is uh, d s by uh, d s by dx times chi y uh, plus 
half uh, ds by dx because uh, theta squared right minus theta y. So, this is the famous Hamilton Jacobi equation and also remember we also have proved that u t is equal to theta t and that is in fact equal to I may end up with the minus later on uh, d s by d x along the optimal trajectory y t. This is the deep connection we are interested in. The deep connection is that there is a connection between the optimal control and the adjoint variable. In this case it is simply they are equal. The third connection is that we wrote down a partial differential equation. Um, yeah, so the, can you replace these two uh, by x because I, so that is the equation. Um, it's just a dummy variable. So uh, not only that, but we found the connection between control, the adjoint variable and the first derivative of the uh, Hamilton Jacobi equation. Before uh, proceeding further, now I will go and take a moment to derive um, the Hamilton Jacobi equation. Um, some insight what type of solutions we can uh, expect um, in Hamilton Jacobi equation? This pen work. So, some insight. Hamilton Jacobi equation. So, notice that what do you have? Uh, Let us look at the terms in the Hamilton Jacobi equation. Where did they come from? Of course, these are derivatives of the equation. So, it is essentially defined in, uh, you know, uh, this is, um, um, this is uh, x, x in r or Hilbert space at this time. So, it is a space time problem. Where did this come from? These are the only two terms you see which uh, look strange, alien to that equation, right? What are the, where did they come from? Where did this come from? State equation. The right hand side of the differential equation has uh, psi of x plus u squared. So, you expect that uh, the first derivative dot product with whatever on the right hand side except the control. Where did this guy come from? As from the course function. You wrote down that. So, in, in some sense, this is the only term that is alien to the system because you wrote, you wrote it down. You could have picked uh, anything you like and you could have even put this equal to 0. Some insight. Um, the Burgers equation, I do not want to go and write down characteristic solutions for this one, but you all have seen uh, this equation. In fact, uh, it was in Professor Adimitri's talk, right? If you have an initial data, which is a, which has just one jump, that is called the Riemann problem, 1 and 0. It exhibits shocks, so expansion fans, uh, depending on which side is bigger. And even most initial data, except one that uh, monotonically, is it decrease or increase? I always forget. Uh, it, it should decrease, otherwise, uh, in which case you have always fans, Otherwise, most initial data will lead to a, a shock solution. So, in general, the solutions behave like, <coughs> right? This is how uh, uxt will look like. In general, can potentially, right? Is very likely there's a jump here. Things can vary that side and that side. Now, um, let's uh, bring this one inside. U squared over half. And, and then we will write, we will give a substitution, Vx is equal to u. Okay, so, uh, so this equation then will look like uh, d of Vx, or maybe I differentiate this one one more time, either you, know, you can do it in either way. So, d of Vx, so d squared by dx dt plus half d by dx of Vx squared is equal to 0. Agreed? Hmm? I just substituted uh, Vx uh, d by partial derivative by x is u, so it looks like that. Now, I integrate it uh, in x, so I get, I get this equation. dv by dt 
plus half v x squared is equal to 0. And this is a, a simple example of our Hamilton Jacobi equation. Would you agree? Because I have a first derivative, these two terms I have, and I have other things there. So, this is a, a, one example of a Hamilton Jacobi equation. So, let us talk about intuition one more time. If you expect shock solutions to this, right? What type of solutions do you expect for that? If you expect shock solutions to this, what type of solutions do you expect for V? It will be worse or less? How do you go from U, uh, V to U? That may be one way to say. What type of functions will give you a step function when you differentiate? How? Well, you can integrate this one, right? So it will look like a hat. Agree? Right. I don't know whether this side or that side is the way I drew it. Well, this is negative. So yeah, this is correct. Right. So this is the way V will look like. You agree? So when you differentiate, when you differentiate more time, you get a delta function. So and therefore, usually the Hamilton Jacobi is uh, expected uh, kink uh, is called kink uh, solutions. Oh, cusp. C U S P. So you may as expect, uh, your intuition says that in general, you may not have discontinuities, but you may have kinks and cusps, right? Because it's one order better than the, um, than the Berger's equation, right? Berger's equation, this is inviscid Berger. Yeah, you have a u squared. Inviscid Berger. And um, inviscid Berger is uh, something invented by people. Uh, later. Anyway, you understand? So, so you expect that the solution to this one is uh, usually maybe Lipschitz continuous. The Lipschitz functions are, you can tolerate as bad as a um, hat function. So, uh, this kind of uh, functions where you have uh, uh, no discontinuity, but uh, uh, this kind of behavior. <laughs> so, uh, the, the, in control theory, what you do is you go to the definition of the value function. And then you prove a continuous dependence theorem for the uh, state equation and come back and show that the value function uh, s or v or whatever um, is, is locally Lipschitz. And then you use viscosity solutions method of uh, Crandall and Lyons uh, to um, talk about solubility for this one. So that viscosity solution started with the viscosity solution of uh, here in, in fluid mechanics. Anyway. So that to give you a picture. Now, if from this, if you want to go to infinite dimension, uh, you know, it is only a function analysis. Easy to say that, but at least the intuition. Uh, so let us go and derive the Hamilton Jacobi equation. It is the same uh, steps in some sense uh, traced by Jacobi, but in the, within the modern setting. Because that is a useful exercise. Some of you may have heard this, uh, but it's good to see it so that you see how the terms come in. Okay, so just register in your mind that you have a first uh, order time derivative, and then, and then also first order spatial derivative multiplying the right hand side, and the first order term uh, derivative squared is just like that Mickey Mouse example, right? And then uh, whatever the term that's on the course functional comes here. So now I will give you a derivation of the Hamilton Jacobi equation, which is sort of um, ideas are identical uh, going from deterministic to stochastic. Stochastic picks up one more term. Um, okay, so okay, let's go back to the Jacobi picture. So we want to start. Our equation is uh, dy by dt is equal to chi y, right? 
Shy Y. I don't need Shy Y now. Let's, I will leave with Y and U. Let's write, uh, leave, work with the more general one because right now I don't need it. Okay. Shy Y. And my cost functional is uh, A to B or maybe 0 to some value. L of um, Y and U dt and this you want to minimize. Right, I just went back to my general uh, formulation. So I define the value function. Value function which I we use s, uh, but in control theory they use uh, v. So probably Bellman's the idea. You know, there at the 50s I heard that Bellman proved uh, the, derived the Hamilton Jacobi, and he wanted to convince people that it was his. At the same time, Kalman, Rudy Kalman, the famous Kalman, he also came up with the Pontryagin maximum principle, perhaps much weaker version than these uh, giants <laughs> with. Uh, um, and uh, so he was screamed. So he, for a while, he defined the pseudo Hamiltonian with a negative and used to go around and give lectures that is Kalman minimum principle. And that didn't fly. <laughs> so, but, but you know, he, maybe he came up with independently. Kalman, also a very smart man. So the value function. Uh, so we defined as uh, it is equal to some starting point tau. We start at a point x. So there, then we minimize over all possible admissible controls uh, dot uh, in the interval, in the interval as you will see from here, from tau to whatever the end point of L of um, y, yt dt. So this. Um, this is pretty basic. It's probably one of the best theories ever developed in, in, in the modern history. So it's pretty basic. You're asking um, rather boldly. So I want to minimize my action functional for the starting position and starting uh, time. How does this value function behave as a function of these two? So you go and uh, uh, de design the following scenario. So that is your x so horizontal over, and this is your vertical plane. So let's take a point tau, and let's take a point tau plus, uh, um, let's write delta tau. Because this is uh, engineering, the engineering of former older, but it's, um, it's, it's OK, it looks nice. So delta tau stands for a little increment. OK, it's a very formal, inf uh, informal. Uh, uh, otherwise, I can put another H or something. And uh, in this interval, I'm going to use a constant, constant control. Let's call it U naught. So I start from Trivandrum at uh, time tau, and for a short time, I don't care about optimality. I go at constant speed, constant. I just press the accelerator. So that means my control is here. Of course, when you apply the control here. The initial position of the uh, my my dynamical system, right? So that my dynamical system started at uh, y of tau is equal to the my initial position x, and it moves to y of tau plus delta tau, right? Some of the, you may remember this derivation. And what uh, how, what is the governing equation for this one? How do you, what is the governing equation for this one? What is y of tau plus d tau? How do you find it? y tau plus delta times dy by dt. Yeah, you just integrate this one, right? In, in that interval, you just integrate it. So integrate it from tau to tau plus delta tau, but you know that this is a constant one, right? At least, so remember that. So you, you come to this position. Now start using this as your starting point. You go until the end. Your goal is Bangalore. So you, but now you go optimally, right? So optimally, and your control there is U star t. So U star t, of course, depends on where you start, at what time you start. So, uh, so U star t. So this is your optimal trajectory. So, so what you executed now, starting from here to there, this is your control, right? 
Is this an optimal control? I will wait. Is it optimal? There is your doubt. Which in the first interval, because you are not sure this uh, maintaining constant is optimal and therefore you are executing a non-optimal part, right? So you are executing a non-optimal part and therefore let us go and first write down this side. So since you are uh, 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 executing a non-optimal path, if I start with, uh, so if I say if I go from tau, tau plus delta tau and I might have my Lagrangian and in there I have uh, y of t and then it is u naught there, remember in that interval, right, dt plus, then I go from tau plus delta tau to the end point b in time, L of, uh, if you want, don't like T, you can write T, it's a dummy variable, U of T, DT. <laughs> there are a couple of questions I want to ask, so this is U star actually. This quantity will be bigger than that or equal to that? Smaller than that. What is it? <laughs> bigger. Why? Because this is the smallest uh, of this will give you that and therefore this is, um, uh, this is bigger than the value function, right? So it is tau and x starting from here. Hmm? In fact, uh, things like optimal stopping and so forth, you do similar argument. What can you say about this quantity? That looks like this quantity, right? So that's is it the value tau, function. Tau plus delta tau yeah, it is the value function starting from tau plus delta tau with an end point which we call y of tau plus delta tau, right? Because we, for a while, for a short while, I just um, went non-optimally. I went to sleep. So and then I woke up and I say, okay, the rest of the path I will carry out optimally. So I get this. There's no problems in differentiabilities in these things here. So you have that. So therefore, let's. Uh, so this is nice because now I my whole story is re reduced to these three lines, and um, so immediately you have a crude proof of the statement that v of tau x is equal to min uh, of uh, u naught in R tau to tau plus delta tau L of y t u naught plus v tau plus delta tau y tau plus delta tau. Why did I write that? All I said is this would have been an equality, this would have been an equality had I chosen this one also optimally, I did not fall asleep, right. So and therefore I get this equality. Anybody know what is this equality called? This is actually the Bellman principle of optimality. In some sense, you can argue that this is actually even used uh, computer science, communication theory in uh, coding, decoding, um, designing. Uh, softwares and so forth, um, more so than uh, the continuous side at least because they use it. At the discrete setting there is no differential equations here, there is a corresponding Markov chain version and, and, uh, and so forth. Uh, so this is called the Bellman's principle of optimality. So that is good, so you can see how easily we can prove uh, the uh, Bellman's principle of optimality. Now we do one more thing. Um, So, we now um, go back to this uh, form and we tailor expand. Don't like to say tailor expand like engineers, actually until maybe re, uh, 40 years ago, even math books, uh, the ones who um, understood cal calculus of variations were into this kind of uh, derivation. It was hard to understand that, but it's 
these are I'm talking about biggest names in in math. So, so it's, it's so so I want to write tau of x is less than or equal to. Let's uh, remember that uh, I have an equality when I pick uh, optimality. Let's uh, remember that. I want to tell you expand this one. So, so the first term let's write again tau tau plus delta tau of the Lagrangian evaluated at uh, y t and u uh, naught d t and then plus uh, now we want to tailor expand about tau and y of tau. What is y of tau? y of tau is x and therefore we the first term in the Taylor expansion is Taylor or McLaugh whoever whose expansion is is tau and x would you agree right because I want to uh, Taylor expand this one about delta tau is equal to 0 and therefore it is about tau and when uh, y is equal to tau y, y evaluated at tau and that is equal to x and then the first uh, term is uh, d v by dx times or if you want dv by dy um, there's a story about a Wyoming student <laughs> I don't have time to get to uh, dv by dy times derivative of this one, right? Um, what is the derivative of that? Times dy by d tau. Or just leave it as delta y, right? That's even better. What is delta y? So, um, delta, so y tau plus delta tau minus y of x, I, I call it a sort of delta y and that is, uh, you know, I used uh, the differential equation. My differential equation was f of uh, x evaluated at x, it is f of x uh, at, um, uh, at u naught for a time delta tau. Agree? Because I, I went with uh, um, non-optimal control for a time. So that is what I have. I even go and write that one here. So it is uh, f of x naught, uh, uh, sorry, x, x of uh, u naught times uh, delta tau. Right? And also dv by d tau by d tau evaluated at uh, tau and x at delta tau, uh, plus uh, order delta tau terms and delta x terms. That's where the st difference between stochastics and uh, deterministic come through. When you do a Taylor expansion, if you have a, um, uh, if your process is, uh, has a Brownian motion, it picks up a second order term. Otherwise, there's no difference. So let's keep it here. So allow me to do some cancellation. What happened to this equality? And, and what happens to this one when I pick uh, this as optimally, it becomes an equality, right? So allow me to, uh, so notice that this cancels with what? The left hand side, correct? So will you, everybody can read the last line here, this space, everybody is, you can read. So let's write it. I have a first order derivative dv by d tau, then plus, let's write everything in between, uh, inside, so it is, uh, or maybe let's first write it for a moment, so dv by dx times f of x naught, question, I divided by delta tau, uh, and ignore that term, so this is uh, gone, that is gone, this is divided by delta tau, uh, tau to tau plus delta tau evaluated at L of y t u naught dt and that is uh, uh, you wanted uh, so there's a minus right I wanted to, so this is okay so this is bigger than or equal to zero correct now let's get rid of that term so that I can that uh, blackboard so that I can write 
Okay, so far what I did, I essentially worked with the Bellman principle of optimality. And um, so, if had I, so in this calculation also, formally I can put um, uh, equality if you happen to put uh, u naught. So the idea is that you formally take delta t to 0. So this will evaluate this argument uh, precisely at uh, tau. So you will get dv by d tau plus, put the other terms in there, dv by dx times f of x tau, uh, x u uh, naught plus L of, uh, what is y at the origin, y at the origin is x, u naught. So what I would do is I will minimize as before with respect to u naught and, uh, and I know I spoke about Bellman principle uh, optimality so and therefore it is equal to 0. In fact, if you recall this is how I define the Hamiltonian, true Hamiltonian but with a negative. This is why I said sometimes I like to I have this negative problem if I start with a, a negative there. So that uh, this term, so this whole thing is what is the true Hamiltonian. And uh, so true Hamiltonian will uh, uh, then will look like d tau plus h of v dv by dx is equal to 0. So that is the Hamilton Jacobi equation. You had you started with the stochastic diffusions, then you would have ended up uh, a term like this Laplacian of v plus uh, whatever the coefficient you have. If you have started with the Levy, and then you would have started with an, uh, you will have another integral. Let's call that uh, jump uh, integral. But uh, the, the, the story is same. And if you instead formulated a min-max problem, people uh, went and studied the min-max, is called the differential games. Then uh, you would have had another variable called W. It's like the adversary. So you try to minimize adversary, try to maximize. So in that situation, you will have uh, max and min. And you will have a W variable here. That's called differential game. The, the, the picture is same. If you correctly digest uh, how the uh, equations are derived, and if you then, uh, if you are ready to take on more function analysis to go from ordinary dot product to inner product uh, and integrals and so forth, you understood the basic problem. This is uh, at the heart of optimal control theory. Now let's uh, talk uh, about another problem. Um, so you can see that the moment you write down these uh, PDEs, uh, even in finite and infinite dimension, then uh, the Hamilton-Jacobi equation is uh, the first order equation where you can have solutions which are non-smooth. Um, so you have mathematical challenges. That's where you know the, the field of viscosity solutions uh, is uh, so far the primary player, otherwise you need some local uh, solvability problems, um, solvability theorems. Let us uh, now talk about uh, the remaining 10 minutes about Walmart. You, you spoke about Walmart, uh, right? Everybody is talking about Walmart. So why didn't we talk about Walmart? So the Walmart problem, <laughs> what uh, some of the adversaries or critics would like to do. Walmart. So let's see. Uh, I don't know. There, let's go back to this uh, differential equation. But now this time I write it in the Ito form. Uh, y. Uh, and then maybe there's no controls here. Uh, dt. And then maybe uh, some dw. You, you put your own. Uh, uh, put it this way. So this is some uh, local. Uh, Cadillac Martingale. That notion is because you want to incorporate all kind of noise uh, processes. It could be Brownian motion. So it's, it's, it's inside here. And um, so I pose this problem in the following way. Let's um, 
let's say you want to so i am the walmart you are the walmart owner and the neighbor you know there's all kind of political oppositions here so you are thinking of uh, uh, maybe shutting it down you know these people are <laughs> very hostile so uh, so you you want to shut uh, the walmart down but when you shut it down you have to pay your employees and possible lawsuits so um let's say the running cost of uh, um walmart is this um is given by some lagrangian y t dt if you shut down so let's say you can you want to go up to time tau and if you shut down then you had to pay the employees and it's called the shutting down cost right so so let's take an expectation because i want to i managed to put uh, uh put a stochastic process here so only difference between what we spoke so far and this one is uh, um is that i have an expectation so you like to minimize tau so um so we minimize or maximize depending on how you uh, what you regard uh, this cos functional is uh, so so that the point is to find this uh, time tau uh, so this is called the stopping time uh, problem optimal stopping time problem so when when can you what is the best time to stop what is the best time to stop this talk in fact fetterini every time i talk to him fetterini is the he did never we came into stochastics that was a pity but he was control theory he was quite a expert so whenever we talk about optimal stopping he talks about how late you can start for a, so that you can go to a movie correctly <laughs> you know because they often you know the family has to get ready and uh, so uh, likewise um, this is a uh, this tells you about uh, uh, optimal stopping so it's quite a bit different in uh, sort of uh, philosophically a bit different problem than what we spoke so far but uh, the derivation of what is the uh, value function you know uh, depending on how you uh, you want to make it a finite horizon or infinite horizon i think it's been spoken before uh, if you just make it an infinite a finite horizon or infinite horizon it depends then it will de determine whether it's a function of um, uh, if you make it if you start from some time t the t and initial data just like before so you'll get uh, either a stationary problem or time dependent problem and um, i think it's paul of paul uh, of um, um, chernoff this is paul paul chernoff or philip chernoff one of the chernoff wrote a very famous article in uh, in sankhya you know the journal sankhya in uh, you know that's an indian journal in the 1960s uh, essentially addressing a problem like that he was interested in optimal decisions and the corresponding hamilton jacobi equation would take this form so the the value function then will satisfy dv by dt plus l of v is less than uh, oh i have too many l here make this one f ah that's an f here make this one theta uh theta at x and t and uh, v less than uh, the function chi at x and t and uh, dl by uh, dv by dt plus l of v minus theta times v minus chi is zero so you have this situation is this is essentially the hamilton jacobi equation our ideas we started with bellman will lead to this problem and this is a famous example it is called variational inequality so here l is the generator of the l is the generator of uh, the process why so the l of um, some function phi would look like typically d phi by dx times uh, whatever the right hand side on the differential equation which is f 
and uh, if you have a um, Brownian motion in the problem, then it will be half of Laplace of f. And if you have a, if uh, this has a jump, uh, then uh, it has a jump integral, uh, which will look like uh, f of uh, x plus gamma minus f of x minus uh, gradient f dot gamma uh, integrated over uh, for a measure, jump measure dz. That kind of, so from what we derive to stochastic Brownian motion forcing or jump forcing, these are the terms that I added. So let us explain this one. What this says is that in general, at least one of them is an equality. As um, uh, when uh, V is strictly less than psi, uh, then you continue because it is uh, not profitable to close. So you continue. Uh, exercise time is when V is equal to psi. So if you solve this one after, so if you somehow solve this uh, uh, differential inequality, then you go and check the points where V is equal to psi. Those are called exercise uh, points. And this, this has uh, many, many applications. Phase transitions, optimal stopping like this one in, uh, and uh, in, um, uh, again, going back to e economics, in 1965, Paul Samuelson, the same Samuelson I mentioned, um, cannot write here. Paul Samuelson uh, wrote a long article, more or less sort of defining this, bringing, trying to bring the stochastic calculus uh, and stopping time ideas into uh, economics. And as an appendix, Henry P. McKean, H. P. McKean, in NYU, and is a famous, he has this little book, uh, Stochastic Integrals. He wrote an appendix, uh, it's called American Foot Option. So thereby the first, you probably know, right? There's the first paper in, say, there is American call option and put option. The, the, the put option is a, will lead to a free boundary problem. So he wrote a paper on American put option. Thereby defining the, uh, the um, option pricing with uh, exercise time, when do you exercise? Is, is, is left open, and that is by solving a free boundary problem. And uh, this problem, you will have a stationary problem for uh, when if uh, you are allowed to exercise, uh, you know, this final time is uh, infinity. In fact, my finance professor friends will say that that does not make sense. Because this means that Walmart is allowed to be here from now to eternity, and at any time they feel like closing. But uh, you would probably like to say is uh, you don't quote me in Walmart because I'm not supposed to make any political statements. I work for the U.S. government. <laughs> but um, uh, what uh, you'd like to say is we give you until this much time. Okay, decide in next next two years when to close, and then you would like to know what is the best time to close. You know, depending on the stock prices, um, uh, right? So the this problem, which is a sort of a sophisticated version of um, um, the Hamilton Jacobi equation I derived, Ben Susan, for example, will penalize, like the way he penalized and bring it here and write it as Hamilton Jacobi equation with non convex functional. Convex functional. Um, anyway, so that's, um, but the story does not end. Uh, at least in a large class of problems, um, the work of Brezzi, Viral Babu, Stampakia, and they all showed that this is also equivalent to. This problem is also equivalent to the big story in nonlinear semigroup theory. M accretive operators, Crandall Ligert theorems, and Komura Kato, right, nonlinear generation theorems. Uh, because the right hand side, the Hamiltonian I showed you, in the, the true Hamiltonian is very, in many cases, is M accretive, like maximal monotone. Uh, and therefore, they generate C a semigroup, C0 semigroup, you saw in Professor uh, Adimuthi's talk, that C0 semigroup happens to be the viscosity solution. So there is this uh, magnificent connections between free boundary problems, viscosity solutions, and nonlinear semigroup theory. And, um, and fortunately, uh, the, the subject we discuss in this workshop uh, is quite connected to. Uh, but it also takes us to the edge of that, because um, in many cases, uh, they, you have the Navier-Stokes operator instead of this nice F, 
right? And you have these uh, a half norms and all these things. I started writing yesterday and then gave up. Uh, that part is easy. So thank you very much for your attention. Fighting though, not fighting. It's okay. This is looks scary. This is actually nice. <laughs>